Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question 2 from the July 2021 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so let's take a read of the information, shall we? So it says, Edward is a sole proprietor who owns and operates Sundale Enterprise. The following transactions occurred in March 2021. Okay, let's take a read. So on the 1st of March, it says that Marcella, a credit customer, owes Sundale Enterprise 4800 Now, that's not actually a transaction. That's just a statement of the amount of money Marcella owes Sundale. On the 17th, however, it says Sundale Enterprise received a check of 1300 from Marcella for part payment on her account. Now, that is a transaction. It's an exchange of value between two entities or at least a transfer of one value, a value, sorry, from one account to another. On the 31st, Edward learns that Marcella has ceased trading and the remainder of receivables from Marcella is not collectible. Ooh. Edward authorizes a write-off of the balance owed, so that's the writing off of a bad debt. So what we need to do is use the information to prepare journal entries to record the transactions in Sundale Enterprises books. Narratives are not required. Okay, let's go. So again, we won't be doing any journal entries for March the 1st. That's just a statement of the balance that March other owes to Sundale. On the 17th, however, Sundale Enterprises received a check of 1300 from March other for part payment on her account. Okay, so we are Sundale, we receive a check. What that means is that we are getting money. So our bank account balance is going to increase. Bank is an asset. And to record an increase in an asset, we have to debit the asset account. So remember, when you're doing journal entries, the debit entries come first and the credit entries follow second and are indented relative to the debit entries. Now, what account are we going to credit here? So if you follow some of my videos from the past couple of years, you know that I use a bit of a, a bit of a, a hack, I guess you could say, which is credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going. What do, what do I mean by it? It is the value. Now, the value here is coming from Marcella. Marcella is paying us. So we have to credit where it's coming from, which is Marcella, and debit where it's going. Where's the value going? To our bank account. So we debited bank. All right. So we are going to credit Marcella. But the other and slightly more technically correct reason for crediting Marcella is because we Marcella is paying us money. As it says here, Marcella, a credit customer, owes Sunday. That means Marcella is a debtor. A debtor is an asset. Assets are debited to record increases and credited to record decreases. Now, if Marcella is paying us 1300 it means that the 4800 she owes us, right? That's how much she owed us at start, and she's paying off 1300 So she's now going to owe us 35 So the amount, the total amount Marcella owes us is going down. That's a decrease in an asset, which is recorded by a credit. And again, that's why we are crediting Marcella. Now, let's take a look at the 31st. On the 31st, what's happening here? It says, Edward learns that Marcella has ceased trading and the remainder of receivables from Marcella is not collectible. Edward authorizes a write-off of the balance owed. Okay, so we're writing off the debt as bad, which means we're going to debit bad debt's expense account and credit Marcella for 3500 We're debiting bad debt's because it's an expense that has now come into existence. And to record an increase in an expense, you have to debit the expense account. And we are crediting Marcella because we are writing off the debt as bad, which means we are totally reducing, totally removing it from the books or reducing it to zero. So reducing, decreasing our synonyms, right? And of course, to record a reduction in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so it says here that at the end of the financial year on 30th April 2021, Sundale Enterprises has trade receivables of 32700 and a provision for doubtful debts of 1170 Further, Edward estimates that 3% of these receivables will become uncollectible. Interesting. What are we required to do? Calculate the amount required for adjusting the provision for doubtful debts account at the end of the financial year. Okay, so why would we have to adjust the provision for doubtful debts? Well, most likely because the new provision is different from the old provision. What is the old provision? Well, it says right here, we have a provision for doubtful debts of 1170. That's the existing or old provision. How do we find a new provision? Well, that's in the next sentence. Edward estimates that 3% of receivables will become uncollectible. The receivables that they're referring to, 32,700. So the first order of business is to multiply 3% by the 32,700. 
we're going to see that here. So it says new provision, 3% of 32,700, that's equal to 981. When you compare it to the existing provision of 1170, we can see that it is less, which will therefore require a decrease to carry it from 1170 to 981. But the question is how much, by how much must it decrease to go from 1170 to 981? Well, all we have to do is subtract. As you can see here, it says adjusting amount 1170 minus 981 equal to 189. All right, lovely. Let's see where we have to put that in the T account. So this is actually the next part of the question. It says record your answer from B part one in the provision for doubtful debts account below to show where the adjustment should be recorded. So they've given you a T account here, which I have recreated down here and I have put the balance that starts on the credit side. Why does the provision for doubtful debts balance go on the credit side? Well, first of all, I'm going to put a card up there with a link to my provision for, for bad debts video that you could go and check out. I'll also put that link in the, the description below. But the reason that the provision for doubtful debts account has a credit balance is because it's a contra asset. Its function is to reduce the value of an asset in the balance sheet. Which asset? Well, debtors or receivables. Now, debtors or receivables is an asset, as we just said. Assets have debit balances. And to reduce a debit balance, what do we have to do? Credit. So therefore, since the function of the provision for bad debts is to reduce the debtor's balance, it needs to have a credit balance. And of course, since we just saw that it's going to go down from 1170 to 981, that's a reduction of 189. How do you reduce a credit balance? By putting a debit entry in the account. Now, they didn't ask us to balance it off. They just asked us to show where the adjustment will be recorded. Okay. Okay. So that's it for part A. Let's take a look. Sorry, part A and B. Let's take a look at part C. Okay. So it says here, complete the following tables to show how each of the following transactions will affect Sundale Enterprises financial statements for the year ended 30th April 2021, giving an explanation for each transaction. So the first one that they give us here is received an order from a customer for goods to be supplied in June 2021. Right. So you might think, okay, well, yeah. So if we receive an order, we're earning revenue. Yes. So this is going to affect the financial statements. Well, yes. But look at when the goods are going to be supplied in June 2021. What is the current year end to which we are drawing up our financial statements? 30th April 2021. Is June before or after April? After. So this earning of revenue for these goods being supplied to the customer is taking place after the year end, which means that they will not affect the financial statements. And we will say as much down here. So the reason, sorry, so will it, will it affect the financial statements? Yes or no? So the answer is no. The explanation is because this affects the next financial year. Again, you could be more, I guess, descriptive in your answer if you want, but since there was only one mark, I, I chose not to be very descriptive. But again, it's up to you. Let's take a look at the next part. Okay, so it says Edward used his personal savings to purchase a vehicle for his private use. Okay, so let's go one time here. It said, so the answer is no. This will not affect the financial statements because this occurs outside of the business. Edward, the owner, yes, is using his personal funds to buy something for himself. So he's not using business funds and he's not, whatever he's buying is not going into the business. So it's not affecting the business at all and hence will not affect the financial statements. Okay, let's take a look at the last part of this part. <laughs> okay, so it says the purchaser's account was incorrectly added up and was overcast by 1600 at year end. Okay, so definitely purchases is an expense. If it's incorrectly added up and overcast, it's going to affect cost of goods sold, gross profit, net profit, and ultimately capital. So we're going to put all that in. So yes, it's going to affect the financial statements because it would cause the cost of goods sold to be overstated and gross and net profits to be understated, as well as the closing capital balance, right? Now, if you want to check out a video that kind of explains that in more detail, I'm going to put a link up there to my net profit correction video in my errors playlist. And of course, you'll also find that link in the description below. Okay, on to part D. Okay, so we have a control account question, but let's start by reading the information. On June 1, 2021, balances taken from the purchases ledger of Sundale Enterprise were totaled as debit balances 1020, credit balances 29,040. So the purchases ledger is the ledger that contains all of our trade creditors. And those are people to whom we owe money for purchasing goods on credit. So therefore, 
these are the opening balances. The debit balances are where sometimes we make overpayments or they have money for us because we made overpayments or refunds or whatever. So that's going to be on the debit side uh, at the start of the period. And credit balances, well, that's the regular balance because remember, trade credit is a liabilities and liabilities have credit balances at start. Let's scroll on a bit to check out the rest of the information. Okay, so it says take, totals taken from the books of original entry or journals on 30th June 2021 were as follows. So we have credit purchases taken from the purchases journal. We have the payment of trade payables that would come from the cash book, as would the total for discounts received. Now, interest charge on overdue accounts will also factor into it, as well as contra entries set off from the sales ledger. That might come from the general journal. And I think we have one more little piece of information below here. Let's take a look. Right, so it says balances at 30th June 2021 were as follows. So we have a debit balance, but we don't have a credit balance. So what we need to do is figure out that credit balance. Let's take a look at the format they gave us to use, right? So it says use the form provided below to prepare the purchases ledger control account for the month ended 30th June 2021, balance the account and bring down the balance on 1 July 2021. Okay, so we know what we have to do, let's do it. First thing to do is to enter the opening balances. So of course the debit balance will go on the debit side, the credit balance will go on the credit side. Next, credit purchases 124.410. So credit purchases would increase the amount of money we owe to our creditors. Our creditors is a liability and to record an increase in the liability, we'd have to credit the liability account. Now, payment of trade payables. When you pay back some of the money you owe, you would decrease the total that you owe. A decrease in a liability will be recorded on the debit side of the liability account. Similarly, discounts received, those are amounts that our creditors allowed us not to pay. So technically, they decreased the amount we had to repay them, hence decreasing the liability. And as we just said, to record a decrease in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. Now, by contrast, interest charge and overdue accounts. So let's say we were supposed to pay in 30 or 60 days and we failed to do so and paid after. Maybe there might have been included in the contract some interest penalty. So if we paid late, we had to pay extra because of whatever inconvenience or penalties. That would therefore increase the liability, which would require a credit entry in the liability account. And contra entries set off from the sales ledger, 300. Now that would go on the debit side. Let me explain why. Now, if you want to check out my control accounts tutorial, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out as well. But I'll tell you here very briefly. Let's say you owed them, whoever they are, $10 and they owed you $8. Instead of transferring the totals, you could just pay them $2. So you'll cancel the $8 they owe you and you'll cancel $8 of the 10 that you owe them. So you're canceling common debt. So when you cancel debt, it means that the debt is going down, the liability is going down. And to record a decrease in the liability, as we said before, we need to debit the liability account. Now, further to that, we have a closing debit balance. Now a closing debit balance, yes, will be brought down on the debit side of the account. But prior to being brought down on the debit side, it has to be carry down from the credit side. Now, from here, this is where we're going to find that closing credit balance, which of course will be initially carried down from the debit side and brought down on the credit side. Now, let's see, let's see how. Well, you have to add up the figures on the debit side, add up the figures on the credit side and find the difference. That's all, so it's some calculator work. That'll give us a balance of 40,980, which will cause the totals to be equal, and we will put that balance brought down on the credit side right there, 40,980. Now, there's just one little piece. Let's scroll down very quickly and take a look at it. Okay, so it's a little theory piece. It says, state one use of control systems in the accounting process of Sundale Enterprises. Now, control systems refer to such things as your control accounts, your trial balance, your bank reconciliation statement, even your suspense account helps you to facilitate those things. Now, the primary purpose, of course, of control systems in the accounting process is to check for errors and to help easily find errors if they are made. So that's about it for this question. Okay guys, there you have it. That's the solution for question two from the July 2021 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about any of the items, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to check out some more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website for some free payway handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.